scared. You're scared. I get it. I understand. You see, I'm needed. You see, I'm need because I'm the realest analyst in this space. You see, many guys, you know, they they, they take payments. They scared on the topics. They're scared. But I keep it as guys. I told you, I I've made one promise. There's only one promise that I, that I make to you with this football analysis stuff is that I'm always going to keep it a stack. I'm always going to be, be, be realer than anyone. You see, if you go into my Twitter profile, this is my tagline, because I've got two taglines. The home of football analysis, and I don't tell you what you want to know, I tell you what you need to know. And you need to know that Klopp is finished. That Klopp is a borderline fraud. Borderline. And the reason why I say borderline is because you cannot excuse his success. His success is amazing. EPL, first one that Liverpool ever won. UCL final, winning the UCL, 99 points, and has got 90 plus points. And if not for what City did, they'd, they'd have like three EPL titles right now, 100%. But let's talk about what it means to be a manager. Let's talk about managing. Because managing is common rain, sunshine, sleet, hail, or snow. I've got to say what's up. My job is I've got to get a Dubinsky. No matter what the situation is, I've always got to get a Dubinsky. I told you about this dude. I told you. If you've been watching this channel, he must go to Dublin Reading. He said, yeah, yeah. Yeah, we're, we're going to go there. I told you we're going to be real. We're going to be real. So if you're not ready for that real talk, please unsubscribe and leave now. Please. If you're ready for that real, get a meal, get a drink, sit down. Klopp has an amazing plan A. When it works, it's amazing. Um, one of the, my favorite teams to watch in this modern era was his Dortmund team. Goetze, Hummels, Gundogan, Kagawa, Lewandowski. And I've forgotten the name of that Paraguayan striker. Someone remind me the name of that Paraguayan striker that, that he had as well. It was an awesome team because I just loved the way they, they played. The energy, the attack, and how aggressively offensive they were. It reminded me of Rijkaard's. Um, of, of Rijkaard's Dutch team of the Euro 2000 and also his Barca team as well. I just love that aggressive attacking philosophy of like the ball will always go forward, the ball must always move forward. So I appreciated that. But when you're employed as a manager, you're employed to win. Now, if you win in a sexy way, good. But the number one thing it says on that job description is you're here to get a dub. <laughs> you basically, you've got to be a dub merchant. If you, I've, I've read it. On the job the description, it says you're employed to be a dub merchant. You're employed to be a dub addict. If you can't be a dub merchant or a dub addict, please don't sign on the dotted line to become a manager. We only want guys who provide Dubinskis. It's real! Once, and look, Klopp, you have to realize what's happening with Dortmund. Because with Dortmund, it is what it is. Kagawa went to United. Goethe went to Bayern. Lewandowski went, went, went to Bayern. Hummels went to, to Bayern. Um, everybody was leaving. So once the plan he has requires specific players. Specific players. Yeah. Specific players. It requires specific players. And if it doesn't have those specific players, it doesn't work. Because it's, it's, it's a style that requires a specific skill set and physical abilities. So the issue was, once those specific players left, he still tried to play the same philosophy. But the issue, though, is what does a manager do? Of course, you have your philosophy on one way of playing. But you're here to get a win. And the only way you get a win is, can these players I have execute this plan that can help me win a game what you don't do is i have my my plan whoever comes in take it because it's my plan no pep is in a fortunate situation where he has a specific plan and he can always pinpoint specific players to fit that specific plan because pep has said it and so you have to you have to use your head here because pep says i don't have a plan b my plan is plan a if we lose, we don't lose because um, we ha should have had a plan B. We lost because we didn't properly execute plan A. But Pep, you're in a privileged position because you've always had the chance to attract whatever players you wanted in, in your team. At Dortmund, Klopp didn't have that luxury to say to cherry-pick the players he wanted to fit the philosophy. These are the players you have. 
you have to now pick the specific strategic plan in order to be effective with these players you have because Lewandowski wasn't there anymore. Gundogan wasn't there anymore. Kagawa wasn't there anymore. Guto wasn't there anymore. Homos wasn't there anymore. They were all left. And as he tried to end, um, enforce his plan, Dortmund were, they were fighting for relegation. Because I remember those games because we were all saying that, <laughs> why do you keep playing this high line? You concede the same goal over and over again and Bundesliga managers aren't stupid. Every manager knew that. If you just time this ball over the, 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 the top, we're in. We time this ball over the top, we've got a 1v1. Because these guys will play the exact same way and will defend the exact same way and play the exact same way. So it was very easy to play Dortmund, specifically because they, don't, they didn't have those danger men that would have actually caught those teams that actually went to, to go at, at Dortmund. But Klopp was like, no, keep going. Now, look, I think they ended up mid, mid table, but everybody was like, change it. Sit deeper. Have a plan B. Have an alternative because it is obvious that these players can't employ what you're trying to say them to employ. So that's that one thing there. So we now move over to um, Liverpool now. And Liverpool, yeah, the boys, you know, Henderson, or, or, Henderson was at his peak, Nuno was at his peak, Salah, Firmino, Mane, Van Dijk doing his thing, your boy Trent, your boy um, Robertson, and so forth. But it's come to a stage where they can't do what they could do back in 2018, back in 2019, back in 2020. It is obvious that these players obviously are not able to properly execute this plan. So what Klopp needs to do is, okay, these are the players I have. This is what they can do. What tweaks do I have to make in order to properly um, employ a plan that can yield me wins? Okay, you can't try to fit a triangle into a square or a square into a triangle. You can't, you can't do that. You've, you've got to be like, okay, this is what I have. That's what a manager does. This is what I have. This is what I'll do. Fergie was amazing at it because Fergie was like, okay, I have York and Cole. This is how we're going to play. Okay, I have Van Nistelrooy. This is how I'm going to play. Okay, I've got Rooney and Cristiano. This is how I'm going to play. Okay, I've got Rooney, Tevez and Cristiano. This is how I'm going to play. Okay, and I have Van Persis. I'm going to play. And in the four different... And back, even before you can go, okay, now I have Kanter now. This is what I'm going to play. So in the four iterations that Fergie had, the general philosophy was the same, but those teams, the way they played was different because he had different players that had different skill sets. And because they had different skill sets, he couldn't employ the philosophy of Jochen Cole with the Nistelrooy era, or the Nistelrooy era with the Van Persie era, or the Van Persie era with the Tevez, Rooney, and Cristiano era. So the issue with that's happening with Liverpool now is the team needs to be rebuilt completely. It needs to be re, re it needs to be reborn. It they need a new team, and the issue is this is this is the exact same team that Klopp walked in. So it is essentially the exact same team. And the issue with Klopp is he, he lacks ruthlessness. Because what you need is you're done. Ah, because that is what Mourinho has. That is what Pep has. They'll be like, you're done. You're, you're, you're not good for me. I need someone new. Because for Pep and Mourinho, they are aggressively chasing wins. They're aggressively chasing success. And so aggressively... as um, gain success and to achieve success you have to be ruthless you can't be the nice guy and the thing with Klopp is he has too close relationship with a few players Henderson has no business being in his team Henderson has no business being a starter squad player he has no business being a starter Femino should have been moved on a long time ago Nabikata it hasn't worked out it simply hasn't worked out for Nabikata you know so and when people bring the whole money thing that oh Klopp didn't have any money Darwin was expensive and everyone knew for Liverpool is Salah is still there. Firmino can still do a job, even if he should be replaced. But the main part of concern is that that midfield needs to be revamped. Henderson doesn't have the legs anymore. Milner, don't don't make me laugh. That big hit has been a flop. And Tiago Alcantara, he's all by himself. But Tiago Alcantara, that is a flair central mid midfielder. You need legs. You need you need you need the the walkman, like a Henderson in there. But he can't do it anymore. He's past his peak. So. My view is this for Klopp. Is that, nah, I could be wrong. I could be wrong. But I am combining what I saw at Dortmund with this. I'm not just looking at this because I remember what he was at Dortmund. And what I see from a, a guy is he doesn't have a plan B. He only has a plan A. Now, it's all called having a plan A. But that's only works if you're in the Pep situation. Because even if you're in the Pep situation, take your plan A. 
Because in a Pepsi situation, you know that I can always pinpoint and get the specific players that I need to enforce this plan A. But in the situation you're in, you don't have that. You don't, you don't have the same luxuries that Pep has in order to always cherry pick the players you want every single summer. So you have to have a plan B. You've got to have a plan C because it's about winning. It's about winning trophies. It's Liverpool, you know. It is one of the biggest clubs in the world. It's about winning. And you must always employ whatever plan it is in order to win. So in the situation you're in, you have to have a plan B. And Klopp, I am telling you right now, I'm a starter, but I will not start it here. Jurgen Jeremiah Klopp does not have a plan B. So for Liverpool fans, what are you going to do? Hey, he won us the EPL vibes and so forth. You know, he is so special to, to Liverpool. He's like Liverpool's second child. We can't, we must always be loyal to him and we always stand behind him. Or, Klopp, what you did was amazing. What you did was supremely amazing. But this team clearly needs to be moved in a different direction. And what needs to happen is the right keyword, the right manager needs to be acquired in order to now take Liverpool into a new direction that can yield wins and success. Because this is a train wreck. This is a train wreck. That's what we're watching here with Klopp and Liverpool. With every week, it is just a team that is void of all ideas because you can't blame this all on FSG. Cool, FSG, 100% they should be blamed and helped. Are these players trashed? Should you be stereotyped twice by Brighton in the same season? <laughs> so those players that I see right there should be stereotyped by Brighton twice in the same season. Sorry, man. Klopp, you could have plan A, but you can't dance with Pep. You can't dance with Mourinho. You are fraudulent compared to those freaking dudes. It is what it is, man. Hit that subscribe button over there, guys, for all that football analytical goodness. And if you remember, hit that member content over there, man. Peace out. Stay true. Uncle Mo will always be the GOAT.